All right, today we are going to do linear, simple linear regression, and it's a uh, straightforward approach to predicting a, a quantitative response variable like y on the basis of a single predictor variable like x. And remember, the capital Y and the capital X is like a random variable, so it could mean all kinds of things. Capital X and capital Y in statistics typically mean a random variable, so it could be any number. It's not quite the same as a regular variable that you learn in algebra. Um, so we're going to assume, because we're going to take this approach and say we're going to do a linear relationship. So we're, we're going to see if there is a linear relationship between a predictor and a response variable. And so mathematically, we want to write this down as uh, capital Y, capital Y is approximately, so that's the approximate symbol, and then we're going to use a term called beta zero, which is basically our y-intercept, and I'll show you this here in a second too, plus a beta one times your x variable. Now these are capitalized, the x and y, because that variable is a random variable. We don't know what it is, right? We're assuming that it could be any random variable, because we don't know. We're trying to fit a formula to our data. That's the goal. Now, um, we're going to call these coefficients of the parameters. Now this one here doesn't really have anything except for itself connected to it. It's not connected to the random variable. So this is like a free parameter where you would estimate this and you would estimate this to get the best value. When you plug in that random variable, you get a best value for y that's actually close to the real value, right? So in our COVID analysis example, um, this might be the death, the, the number of deaths. So the number of deaths, whoops, is equal to some initial condition coefficient plus some other coefficient times the number of cases, right? So this might be cases. So beta one times the number of cases plus some initial condition equals the number of deaths. Again, these model coefficients uh, are sometimes called parameters as well. And once we find once we have the data, we can start estimating what this y really is. So this y right here in this equation, it's a true y. This is the y we want in real life. But as you see the approximate symbol here, so this y is approximately this formula, right? We don't know the formula because we don't know what our betas are, right? But that's still, that's a very valid y. The true y is approximately this. So if we want to start estimating that y, we would start using lowercase and we put the little hat on there say, hey, an estimate for that true value of y, the estimate of that y is actually equal to, because it is an estimate, I, can't, I don't have to use approximate anymore, I'm creating, I'm creating an estimate out of the data points. So because it's an estimate, I put the hat on there, but it's truly equal to, now we're going to use um, beta naught with a hat on, so an estimate for beta naught plus an estimate for beta one times um, an x variable, okay? So the y hat indicates a prediction of y, the actual y, on the basis of, we're saying that this x happens to equal that little x. So when this big x this big X could be a bunch of random numbers. It's whatever random number it, it can be. We're saying, hey, of all the random numbers in the world, we choose the random number called X, and that's why it's here. Now, it's, it's subtle, and it's just notation, so don't get too caught up with it. But I wanted to give you that to start our linear regression process. So how do we graph something like this? I want to bring you back just a couple years to basic uh, graphing of a Y equals MX plus B type equation because you'll notice this is kind of like a y equals mx plus b equation. I'll show you that in just a moment. Let's let's move this over here and I'll create a new one. So we had a y, well we have the y hat is equal to the beta naught hat plus beta naught or beta one hat times some variable x. This is our estimate for the true value of y. It's a an exact equation because we have the equal sign there but because you have that hat on there, it means, hey, that's a estimate for the y value, the true value, right? So that reminds me of back in algebra when you have the original equation, y equals mx plus b. And remember, uh, when you graph this equation here, there's a couple of rules you can go by. So let's just go ahead and create a equation where I know the slope and I know the b. 
and we'll graph it real quick. So let's just pretend this was y is equal to 2x plus 3. Now, how do you graph this? Well, we have the coordinate system here. I just randomly created it, focusing on the first quadrant, quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4, but we're going to be focusing on the first quadrant. So y equals 2x plus 3. Let's label our axes so you have an x and a y. And what we're going to say is, hey, when x is 0, when you've put a 0 in there, when that's possible, 0 times 2 is 0, plus 3 is 3. So therefore, y is equal to 3. When x is 0, so down to 0, when x is here, the y value is here. We know for a fact we have a point right here on this uh, coordinate system. So we got that figured out. Now what's our slope? The slope is 2x. The slope is always the m value. And what is the m value? Well, it's the one that's connected to the predictive variable, the x. So it's always connected to the x in this, in this example. So what's our m value? Well, it's that 2. So there's our 2. And remember, m is equal to slope, which is equal to rise over run, which is equal to, in this case, we know that our rise over run and our m is equal to 2. So solve for this. Well, 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1, because 2 divided by 1 is 2. So our rise must equal 2, and our run must equal 1. So let's rise to 1, 2. I'm going to go up 2, and then over 1. And that's how you do it. I'm sure you all remember this, but the refresher probably couldn't hurt. And so you have a, you have a line. Two points, make a line, no matter what. You can go down 2, left 1, down 2, left 1. You can go up 2, right 1. It doesn't matter because, remember, negative 2 divided by negative 1 is equal to 2 as well. You're not making a change to the equation. But that's not that important. What's important is that you understand how this kind of graphs because what we're going to do next is we're going to have some random dots on the page and we're going to say, well, what's the best fit here? So it's important that you kind of understand the language of mathematics and the formulas before you start using R to actually do the predictive analysis for you. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, you won't need to know all of this, but you need to kind of understand the big picture of what it's trying to get at. So hope you enjoyed. And again, please share this video if you like it. Subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.